Um, welcome to everyone. Welcome to somatic practitioners, other practitioners, those of you who don't even know anything about Feldenkrais, this is your first exposure. We're here to maybe point the way to and spark some enthusiasm. Feldenkrais practitioners and trainers, assistant trainers, realize, understand just how big this method is and recommit to doing it in your, to your fullest. Um, Somatic uh, 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 education is concerned with the learning process of the living body, the soma, as it acquires awareness through movement within the environment. And Moshe Feldenkrais was a giant in the field of somatic education. It actually came out of the human potential movement in the 60s. And the concept of cultivating the extraordinary potential believed to lie largely untapped in most people. He often referred to this potential as the changeability of the brain in his teaching. And it's what we now call neuroplasticity. Turns out he was in fact one of the first neuroplasticians. He said, what we consider possible or impossible has nothing to do with reality because we behave like small babies having a huge brain and only using a small bit of it. We distinguish Feldenkrais from other somatic education systems by focusing on learning through movement and the brain. It is not a science, even though its founder was an accomplished scientist. It's first and foremost a learning method. Maybe this definition might, might help you. Feldenkrais is an embodied process of learning through movement with awareness, leading to improvement of the self-image, coordination, and action. We inquire into our experience in this, in, this, in this way that we learn the Feldenkrais method. In fact, we do not learn from our experience, we learn our experience, says Anat Banyel. A little bit about Moshe for those of you who don't know his life story, and maybe even those of you who already do, just to appreciate just what an extraordinary time that he lived in, a tumultuous time. And he was always really curious and intrigued to find ways to enhance his own body's to capacity to survive, to thrive under very difficult conditions. And his life events brought him to the creation of his method. So let's look at some of these concepts and how the Feldenkrais can then assist with well-being, biological fitness, and some of the robustness here. Now, first I want to just define biological um, fitness. Um, Jeff Haller, I think he was the one who first mentioned this concept to me. And he says it's a functioning in any environment or context. So it's more than just, you know, a muscular or cardiovascular fitness. This is different. This is, this is how we can create options where we can increase our biological fitness and be functional in new and shifting contexts. I think it was something that Moshe talked about too. And, and I think that Cynthia talked about it too, about the flexibility of the brain, the flexibility of our actions. And also robustness. Robustness is the ability of tolerating perturbations, irritants, disruptors. And we see a robustness, and they talk about it in a lot of different avenues and areas here. Computer robustness, for example, is, is an operating system that doesn't crash. Economic uh, robustness is an economic system that doesn't crash because of any kind of waves in, in the system here. And biologically, we talk about the ecological system being robust. But we also need those irritants. Our immune system, our digestive system, unless we really get those irritants and we learn how to deal with them, we really don't develop really well. We don't develop our immune system, our digestive system, and so forth. And I think Moshe, through the movement system, he did it through the movement system. He did put some irritants in there, but he did it in a very, very intelligent way. If we have the biological fitness and the robustness, that will lead us to wellness. So then the question is, how can we as Feldenkrais Method educators create this robustness and biological fitness? Well, the answer is pretty simple from, from a Feldenkrais practitioner perspective. It's by practicing and living our awareness through movement lessons. 
the Feldenkrais method can really build this robustness and fitness in, in ways that really no other method can. If you, if you really look at how Moshe tied together these awareness through movement sequences, he did it in a, in a way that was really coherent to allow for the nervous system to create options that will lead, that will lead to robustness and fitness. And that will allow us to act in a multitude of ways. But he did it in a way that made it cohere to the nervous system. And I think we have to realize that because there are so many approaches that are talking about, you know, we're adding variations to movements, we're doing, we're working with the nervous system and so forth. But variations itself does not build robustness. And, and actually variations can lead to chaos and confusion as well as robustness, unless they're well integrated. And Moshe really understood this. He understood how to, how to make these movements, these awareness through movement lessons, coherent in a sense so the nervous system could really develop and, and make us robust here.